working hard in the rally, but struggling to put away short balls. Serving well, but can't capitalize on your opponent's weak returns. Well, follow these four tips from how Emirati Kanu handles short balls to better help you deal with yours. So the first thing we'll do is watch it at half speed. And now let's break it down. The first idea for when you receive a short ball is you actually need to create space around the ball. If we look at how Radicanu moves, she'll come around the side of the ball and give herself a little bit of space. So she sees the ball approaching. She identifies she wants to use her forehand. So she runs around and gives herself space. Why I'm pointing this out is because when I see recreational players, what they often do is they rightly want to take advantage of the short ball, but you end up just rushing straight at the ball. Remember to hit the ball well, you have to be able to swing inside out. To accomplish that, you have to give yourself the right amount of distance to swing the racket away from the body. And the way you can do that is you need to actually give yourself a little more space so you can complete that inside out swing. Now related to the preparation is her racket work. Yes, she's moving around and creating space, but notice how compact her racket is. Her racket is very close to her body and essentially she's just created a unit turn. And this is a really important checkpoint by the time the ball has bounced. So there we go. We see it bounce on the court. You want to have the back edge of your racket to the back fence and then you want to have your hands to the side. We oftentimes see players who get that short ball and here I'm talking about club and recreational players. You work really hard to get that short ball but you get a little excited and your arms go all the way back because you want to hit that ball really hard. But notice how she's sticking with a great fundamental. She's just making a very compact unit turn by the time the ball has bounced her hands are to the side and the back edge of her racket is also to the back fence check if that's where you are by the time the ball has bounced which leads us to the next tip that you should be checking and that is you want to use the ground for power power comes from the ground upwards that's just a physical law i'm not making that up by any means or i'm not asserting an opinion power comes from the ground upwards and you want to use the ground to basically sink and lift as you hit. So if we watch here, if we just put a line at the top of our head, you'll notice that she'll really sink into the ground here because she wants to hit the ball really hard. The ball is moving a little bit slower. She wants to hit it hard. She wants to take advantage. The way to do that is you need to generate power. How do you generate power? It comes from the ground up. Notice how her legs are bending. Her back right hip is loading energy. And from here, she's going to start driving upwards. Again, if we compare it to a recreational club slash passion player, we see you often run straight at the ball, take your arm really far back because you want to hit it hard and just create a swing based on your arm where you need to use your whole body to hit the ball really well. If you made it all the way here, please like and subscribe. It does help a new channel grow, which leads us to the approach of the racket to the ball. So she's created an adequate amount of space. She's moved inside the court. She started to load the body. And if we actually look from the point of impact here, you'll notice that the racket head is still approaching from below. I know this is really a simple fundamental, but it's so essential to hitting the ball well. You cannot hit straight downwards on that ball unless you're hitting from in front of the net. You want to still approach the racket head from below the height of the ball so you can impart some revolutions on the ball so you can get it in. You want to control the revolutions on the ball so that you can have control over where the ball goes and trust that it will go into the court because you're making it spin. You're going to clear the net, but you're going to trust the revolutions to bring it down into the court. Obviously, it's not a high looping ball and we can tell it's not a high looping ball she's returning because the racket head doesn't fall as low. But this is a fundamental that you must execute. You still must get the racket head below the height of the intended impact point. And then most importantly is the extension outwards towards the target. So this is where we see lots of club and recreational players really misunderstand what's going on, where they often see players finishing in positions like this because they're swinging the racket so fast that it looks like they have completely just folded across their body. That's not really the reality of what happens. The most important part of the swing is from here to here. And if we notice in these frames, the strings are really extending outwards. You can see her hand has gone away from her body and that's because she's extending the string 
strings outwards towards the target. If the ball will always go where the strings are facing, you want those strings facing the target for a long period of time. You want them traveling from below the height of the ball, contacting almost vertical. As you swing faster and faster, they'll slightly start to hood. And then you want them extending outwards to the target before your hand reaches its limit. And then it has fold across. Check if you're hitting these checkpoints. And if you want to hit the ball really hard, but still get it in, you need to understand how to get topspin and why topspin from the theoretical sense is so important to be able to play this game really well. And you can learn about that in this video. See you soon.